All right, guys, it's probably pertinent that we start this particular life's biggest question with a very bold disclaimer. Smoking of any sort kills. Whether it's cigarettes, cigars, or smoking tobacco in a pipe, smoking is uncategorically devastating for the human body. Smoking tobacco, for instance, kills around 480,000 Americans every year, but it does so gradually with cancer and heart diseases that tragically strike after decades of consistent use. So then, when vaping was marketed as a cessation to the addiction to nicotine, what went wrong? Because the truth of the matter is, vaping Vaping has led to the deaths of at least 27 people in North America alone, with hundreds more taken ill. So let's see what the facts say. Hello internet, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, life's biggest questions. As per usual, I'll be your disembodied floating voice, Jack Finch, as today we curiously ask the question, is vaping actually killing people? Roll the clip. Whoa, you smoke? It's an e-cigarette. Care to vape? Don't you want to be one of the cool kinder? For the curious amongst you, that clip was from, of course, The Simpsons season 26, an episode that led to quite a high amount of controversy regarding its stance on the matter. But in hindsight, as most things are with the prophetic power of The Simpsons writing team, they pretty much got it bang on the money. Really, those guys are just straight up Nostradamus. You see, the thing is, what The Simpsons chose to focus on in regards to vaping was instead the seemingly deliberate marketing scheme that appeared to be tailored toward young people rather than the now very clear signs of the health concerns raised by vaping. And that's a completely different matter, and one that we'll leave out of this particular life's biggest question, because the truth of that matter is astonishingly clear. Most recently, scientists have confirmed what common sense has told us for decades already. Inhaling toxic chemicals is bad for you. And that's exactly what vaping is, the inhalation of toxic chemicals, nicotine. But now, with a soaring addiction amongst young people, many individuals on life support, strange, bizarre deaths, and terrifying lung damage, the data just keeps on piling up. You see, back in 2003, when the first vape was released, marketed initially as an e-cigarette, it was anyone's guess as to the long-term health implications of vaping nicotine, rather than smoking it in a cigarette. And whilst obviously the medical world has been pretty well decided on smoking cigarettes for a long, long time, we have to remember that at the turn of the 20th century, smoking cigarettes was once recommended by doctors. And even earlier than that, in the Victorian era, smoking was recommended as a health solution. In the grand scope of the history of medicine from the 1930s to the 1950s, doctors, specifically physicians, were tantamount to the advertising pages of cigarette brands. When health concerns about cigarettes began to receive scathing public attention in the 1930s, tobacco companies decided to take preemptive action by capitalizing on the public's trust of physicians in order to quell concerns about the dangers of smoking. You see, the thing is, this is often used as an argument against the recent influx in journalism surrounding the clear health hazards of vaping, but one thing in particular should be highlighted. Vaping was never presented to the market as a healthy habit. It was offered as an alternative to an already unhealthy addiction, but an alternative that would eventually be focused on cessation of the smoking habit rather than complete replacement. The grey area is that adults, of which should be the only people free to choose if they would like to smoke or not, weren't exactly given the full amount of information when choosing to replace their smoking addiction with that of e-cigarettes and vaping. After their release in 2003, the data was not comparable to anything else. In many ways, it was the Wild West. Need more information. And now, as it appears, that information is beginning to rear its head. So, again, what went wrong? In August of this year, the world's first vape-related death was reported in Illinois. Within the weeks following that event, the number had risen to a total of 12 in the US. And now, around 27 people have died in North America alone, with hundreds more hospitalized. After this strange and tragic string of occurrences, horrified US lung specialists uncovered hundreds of severe yet mysterious cases of vape-related illnesses, primarily amongst young people, many of whom were put on life support. You see, the thing is, physicians were baffled about what exactly was causing the damage in their lungs. Was it an additive to the vaping liquid? Was it a lung crippling oil residue? Some form of containment in the manufacturing process? Rogue agents? The only correlation that they had between each case was that all of the afflicted included those who would vape nicotine or cannabis, or in some cases, both. An investigation by state health departments in both Illinois and Wisconsin soon began to offer more insight to the matter after the organizations traced the first signs of illness amongst 53 track patients back to April of 2019. The victims, most of them young men with a 
median age of 19 overwhelmingly ended up in hospital, many under intensive care, and a third of them on respirators. These patients typically experienced coughing, chest pain, or shortness of breath before their health deteriorated to the point that they needed to be hospitalized. Many of these victims ended up with acute respiratory distress syndrome, a life threatening condition in which fluid builds up in the lungs and prevents the oxygen needed to function from circulating in the bloodstream. Still, though, the causation between the instances seemed murky at best. However, following an investigation into the pathology of vaping associated lung injury published in the New England Journal of Medicine, researchers reviewed lung biopsies from 17 patients and subsequently found no evidence of tissue injury caused by an accumulation of lipids, fatty substances such as mineral oils, which has long been suspected as a possible cause of the lung injuries associated with vaping. While medical researchers are adamant to highlight that they can't completely discount the potential role of lipids, instead, what they did find is that the damage seemed to be some kind of direct chemical injury, similar to what may be found with exposure to toxic chemical fumes, poisonous gases, and other toxic agents. Now, it's important to note that the direct chemical injury still hasn't been officially pinpointed, but following a statement on the 27th of September from the CDC, officials said that most people involved in this outbreak had used THC-containing products or both THC-containing and nicotine-containing products. After conducting in-depth interviews with 86 of their sick patients, they discovered that the vast majority reported using illicit THC containing pre filled vape cartridges, which they had bought from informal sources. It's also important to note that the actual content of those illicit THC products are still being tested. In line with that, after a separate investigation by the FDA, investigators found that the same key components seem to appear in the vast majority of these cases. They found that the same vitamin E derived oil in THC products appeared time and time again, although FDA officials cautioned that they cannot yet pin the entirety of the illness onto it. The chemical in question, vitamin E acetate was present and accounted for in almost all of the THC samples from victims identified in New York specifically. This vitamin E acetate has been used as a thickening agent to adjust the THC levels of products found primarily on the black market, and these thickening agents are nearly pure vitamin E, according to officials. Vitamin E, as you may imagine, has no business being in the lungs. You see, with all of this information, it's still not definitive of what the ultimate cause or numerous causes of these vaping-related illnesses and deaths actually are. There are many moving parts of this looming health crisis, and whether the specifics of these deaths are an isolated case entirely, or as a result of the wider vaping industry as a whole, is yet to be established. In regard to the specifics of this question, the facts are clear. In North America, the deaths of 27 people have been confirmed in vaping-related injuries, as well as over 1,300 confirmed and probable other cases. As with the case with many things, more information is required to establish the facts, but the results ultimately are hard to ignore. Again, to harken back to our original point, smoking toxic chemicals is deadly. And that is one fact that we can't ignore. These are supposed to be worse for you than real cigarettes. I was told that they are good for you. Doesn't matter. It's a substitute for the real thing. Well, there we have it. Our long and short answer to the question, is vaping actually killing people? What do you guys think on the matter? Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any other intriguing insights. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. First up, in all caps, Comrade King says, how do I turn my caps lock off? 2003 called, but they um they want their joke back. Well, on that note, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just like biggest questions in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been with this Molly Floating Voice, Jack Finch. You've been watching Life's Biggest Questions, and until next time, you take it easy.